team ban. Okay, and welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and I will be casting this best of three between No Tyler and Virtus Pro. Now, this is a tiebreaker match for fourth spot in the playoffs in the uh, finals that we played in January. Now, No Tyler and Virtus Pro, they're playing up tonight. If uh, the winner here will go forward to play against the winner between Mouse Sports and Absolute Legends, and that game will decide who gets that fourth, much coveted fourth spot. However, that said, tonight, Virtus Pro hold a 1 0 lead, completely crushing No Tyler. No Tyler, they had a this sketchy start and it really just did not get much better for them. They had a shot in the mid game, but unfortunately, things kept snowballing out of control. Luna completely decimated them in the end, unfortunately, for them. And those track kills obviously gave her a lot of extra money. And of course, there was a lot of basically loaded, just was never given a chance to get any farm either. That really stung as well. Uh, in the end, you know what? They have a chance to recover here. Luna, though, being a quick ban out from No Tyler, they said, alright, let's have enough of that. And No Tyler, uh, Virtus Pro actually ran a huge aura strategy. We had Vengeful Spirits aura. We had, obviously, the passive off Luna as well. We had the, uh, an early, a very, very early Vladimir's offering off a of bounty hunter as well. They gave him a ton, an absolute ton of extra damage. 25 minute mark, we had the supports, the, di the Virtus Pro supports were hitting for 150 plus at 25 minutes in. They were basically carrying a double damage rune with them at all times. That's how hard they were hitting. And you consider, like, your entire team's walking around with a freaking double damage rune. That, that's, that's not, nothing to be sniffed at at all. That really caused all sorts of havoc for No Tyrant. In fact, their towers just got absolutely shredded in the end. But, regardless, back to this match, No Tyrant to ban out the bat right. I kind of expect to see S4 try and snap up. Uh, try and get his hands on the Templar Assassin and do very well. That Virtus Pro, though, going to ban the Bounty Hunter. It's often a very... It's pretty much an insta-pick lately. An insta-pick, insta-ban, and unfortunately, no time. They allowed it through last match. They banned out Batrider as well as... Uh, I forget who the second ban was. But they banned out the Batrider and somebody else. And then, obviously, well... Little old Bounty Hunter slipped through, and boy, does he cause a lot of trouble in these fights. However, first pick now to no time. And we'll see what they go with. Will we see another first Darkseer pick, or will we see something else up their sleeve? I should mention, I should mention that we did indeed see another armlet spin, something that No Tunner had been doing since DreamHack. I don't really know how I feel about it, because I honestly... I, I've been told before that I'm pretty sure it was Envy, said no, it's bad, and then suddenly I see No Tunner doing it, it's like, well, make up your mind. Anyway, Undying Moon picked up. Should mention again that he actually is Confirm bug. Confirm bug. Ice Frog has posted on this. He's getting too much health out of his decay. Way too much health out of his like in early game it's a big impact. Late game didn't nobody notices. But early game it's a pretty big deal. It makes him way, way too tank in the early game. There's 130 extra health roughly, I think it's 100, 130 extra health in the early game. It is a ridiculous amount of extra health during that early phase, level 1 decay. Anyway, we do have the Undying picked up, obviously going to give them a fair amount of mid-game team fight. Lone Ruled as well, Templar Assassin, okay, so we've got some signature here. S4 plays a hell of a Templar Assassin. And Lone Ruled also being picked up. That said, if somebody's going to tear Lone Ruled apart, it's going to be Lifesteal and a bit of negative armor thrown at him. Lone Druid does really cause some... No, Lone Druid gets a lot of health, unfortunately Lifestealer scales with that health gain, so... If they can get some negative armor onto the Lone Druid, that could really rip him apart quite quickly. We've seen it happen before. That said, though, it was the combo that I saw completely decimate the Lone Druid was a Templar Assassin and a Lifestealer. So it was Templar Assassin with Blink. The Lifestealer was hitching a ride, jumping in, and then going to town on Lone Druid after the meld hit him. But regardless, we do have a Wisp banned out here by No Tyner. It was a final pick for No Tyner in the last game, and it really just did not work out for them in the end. Nagasaran also being banned there. Nagasaran, you know, is a great setup. For uh, Tombstone and stuff like that, allows me to get in position, start getting the, start get the zombies in a position, that sort of business. But that said, she's still not that popular in the current meta. She really has been completely and utterly overlooked as of late. I was almost hoping to see Gyrocott to get popped out again, but it looks like he won't be, won't be seeing him anytime soon. So we also have the fourth man coming in from No Time. I'm looking at Virtus Pro. They have one of their supports sorted out. Now the question is whether or not Virtus Pro will go for one of those junglers. Always a possibility. Or they might even try and do something crazy like a Lifesteal or Wisp. That's also a possibility. That said, Last match, we did see a couple of the better junglers banned out by No Tunner. They got rid of the Enigma as well as uh, was it the Furion. Yes, the Nature's Prophet. They got rid of those two just to try and prevent those early pushes on their weak lane. However, they didn't have to worry about that because in the end, Virtus Pro ran that offensive try and decimated Sven with it. And the question is, where are they going to put Bulldog? Are we going to see an offensive try out of No Time Under? Will they try and cause some trouble with the Undying or will they just play it cool? and just sort of put Bulldog in his usual suicide teller role with the Lone Druid and then try something else. We'll see. We will see in a bit.
And it's people call internal envy the captain. Technically, I believe Aki on paper as a captain does all the organization management um, management stuff. However, Envy, and I, I mean, I spoke to him about this. Envy says, you know, during scrims and stuff, everybody sort of has an input on uh, who bans what, what they pick, what they ban. But when it comes to game time, apparently he's, all these teammates all these teammates clam up and put all the responsibility on his shoulders. His exact quote was, uh, fuck my team, fuck you guys. That's, that's literally what he said to me during one of her interviews. So, yeah, it's probably Envy doing most of the banning here. However, he's technically not the captain, and I have uh, made the mistake of sending Envy the password and then discovering that most of No Time are then going, where the hell is the password, because Envy's decided not to tell anybody. But, that aside, we do have Keep the Light banned out here by Virtus Pro. Again, No Time Runner, banning out the Nature's Profit, getting rid of that global Damn. gameplay there. And it's actually something, again, mobility-wise, that Lifestealer can use to hitch a ride to combat. Fight. Just hitch a ride to the fight and get stuck in. Enigma though, the fight again, that Dyer Enigma and Fury on bat, I believe they're worried about their suicide lane getting beaten on again, and that means they're possibly going to stick Lauren Druid there again, which means I get the feeling we're going to either have dual lanes, we're either going to have a 2-2-1, or we're going to see, or we're going to see a defensive prime, we will see in a moment. Because in all honesty, in all honesty, a jungler would probably favor. No, t If they were running an offensive trial, and generally speaking, a jungler will favor them, because this means they have a 3v2 advantage, and allows them to put a lot of initial pressure on the lane and force the remaining two heroes to carry and the support away from the lane. With three heroes, they can bully them, force them back, make them miss out on a couple of waves of experience, and that is fairly crippling. It allows that uh, trialing to stay ahead of them on experience gain. So a jungler usually benefits the trialing in that situation, but the fact they're banning it out leads me to think that Lone Druid will be taking that suicide solo, and they'll have the Undying in the safe lane. Possibly maybe just pulling the jungle. We'll see what they decide to go with in a moment. But the final ban there was Shadow Demon from Virtus Pro, and of course they played him extremely well last match. That's it, Envy plays a pretty mean Shadow Demon as well, something that No Tunner do pick up on the odd occasion. So, you know what, definitely not a terrible ban, and it's also a good setup as well. Just set someone up, just disrupt them out of position, or go for that save, Lone Druid, Temple of Assassin, all that business. Rubik, though, the next pick, it's definitely got some nice spells. Still, Jakira, of course, has a smorgasbord of spells to spur him to Nick. Darkster as well, you get a vacuum, you get a search. Iron Shell, even any of his spells, always fantastic for Rubik to get his hands on as well. Even if he can throw it, if he can get that wall as well, that wall shreds people. That's a really good steal as well if you can go for it. But failing that, I mean, Jakira always has fantastic spells. Always money in the banana stand, as they say. It's kind of like that for him. Always has cash there. Always has those nice little spells to pick up from Jakira. It doesn't matter when or where he pops up. Whereas if you're trying to chase after Sven, you like throw out the steel and you never know if you're going to get... If you see Sven, you never know if you're going to get Warcraft, if you're going to get Stormbolt. It's really annoying. Reserve time. Enchantress. Enchantress the next pick there. So this is what I meant. They were worried about those Radiant team junglers, but they will get their hands on Enchantress. They're usually Chen is the go-to hero. That said, Enchantress is the initial faster push. If you want to take a super, I mean, and I mean a super quick uh, tower in the uh, in the safe lane, if you want to kill that enemy weak lane's tower, Enchantress is the hero to go through. She gets a couple of good creep, gets a couple of Earths, gets a couple of Tindles. She can tear down a tower. A lot of extra damage there. Or even a couple of satyrs as well. Satyrs are also really good because you can go in there and just spam like two sets of nukes. That's 250 damage here on the creep wave. Just start spamming those nukes out. That is very, very effective. Whereas Chen, he can't do that at level one. He can't steal a pair of uh, he can't steal a pair of hard count creeps. He has to wait till he levels up to get those pair. Whereas Chen can get rolling straight away. That said, though, with Jakiro as well. I mean, this could be a quick push on the weak lane. This may upset Lone Druid somewhat if Jakiro lifestyle and Chen just pick off his tower very quickly. Especially since Enchantress is a very strong ganker from that jungle tree. She has her own slow. She brings a creep to the party as well. Throw in the open wounds and ice path and dual breath. That means the lone droid is going to struggle. They might even just say screw it and put him in the jungle after a bit. And it's a gyrocopter. I said we're probably not going to see it, but I was wrong. Here we go. Gyrocopter, of course. This is a, this is an interesting hero. I really can't... I, he doesn't have, uh, see, this is the thing, Gyrocopter doesn't have a lot of single target DPS. What he has is the ability to decimate a team all at once. That said, they don't have the lock, like Gyrocopter's got a hero that you want slamming a team when they get hit by a Ravage, or hit by a Black Hole, or hit by a huge AoE, AoE crowd control. That's when the Gyrocopter moves in and just does a couple of quick hits, it gets a, a Daedalus Brock or something, does tons of damage, and basically pretty much a couple of, like, does a fair bit of damage, plus wipes out, wipes out the supports at the same time. Whereas in this lineup, he doesn't quite have that same potential. That said, though, Jakiro and Chantress are really going to watch out for this, because those two heroes are very easy for him to snap, and they may get incidentally picked up. Broodmother being picked up, though, 
And this could be interesting. She should be fairly survival. That's a gyrocopter, of course, can hold off the spidling push with his uh, all barrels. And I'm kind of expecting one level one level in his homing missile, one level in rocket barrage, and then just stats and, of course, his, uh, his range, essentially a range cleave. But we will see. We will see what they go with in a second. Definitely not... 100% sure, but that said, you know, when your back's against the wall, time to throw some curveballs. Time to be unpredictable, because that's what really will throw somebody off against you. Five seconds remaining. We'll call it the players in just a moment. So here we go, what have we got? Alright, so, for the rated team, for no tie under, we have... Envy playing the Rubik, Aki playing the Undying, so it will be a support Undying. S4 playing Templar Assassin, no surprises. Loda playing the Gyrocopter, and Bulldog playing the Lone Druid. Because that is his signature hero indeed, Admiral Bear Dog. But on the dire side, we have NS playing the Kuro, Airman playing Life Stealer, KSI playing Enchantress, Santa playing the Broodmother, and Kurz playing the... Who was the final pick there? It's already managed to escape me. It was... Cock. I forgot. All right, then. We'll remember it in a moment. Regardless, though... Kurz will be playing the solo mid, most likely. There we go, it was Darkseer, that's right, Darkseer, of course. Darkseer going to be taking that solo mid there. And he will be up against... I think he's going to be up against... Good question. Uh, S4, that's right, S4. Now, we've had this discussion before. Templar Assassin, of course. She gets counted, she, in the fight, she loses those refraction charges really, really quickly to Iron Shell. At the same time though, she should be able to handle this. It's going to be annoying as hell for her, but at the same time, once she gets the, once she gets the side blades, it, uh, it'll be fairly easy for her to land the last hit there. It won't be too much of an issue. And of course, if she really gets under pressure here, she can use this easy again. She can go and jack that easy camp. Assuming that Darkseid doesn't do a repeat of what S4 did last match and jack it himself, so we'll see. We'll see Aki, though, supporting Loda here with Envy. And, wow, Rubik has pulled a lot of... Oh, actually, no, he's still saving. So I think he's waiting. He's saving the 200 gold, basically saying, you know what, all right, I'll save this for counter wards. If we need the counter wards, I'll bring him out. If we don't, then I'll leave him. It looks like Broodmother will be here, so they might, in fact, want that. Broodmother already coming out and getting rid of this patch of trees with her web. Smart move there. Just makes it a lot harder to gank her to sweep in from behind. But at the same time, they'll get some counter wards. She may walk out of position, incidentally, and get picked off. So we will see. Owned by Shideka says Rocket Barrage isn't a single target. It's technically not a single target skill, but for maximum effect, you try and get it on one target. You want to hitting all, all hitting on that same guy. The battle begins. But it's more of, and more what's going to clean up the spirlings is of course his flat cannon is going to just, just basically decimate the spiling push. And of course, this means Broodmother, she, rather than trying to push with the spine, she's mostly, I think, going to send them to the jungle and just farm with them in there. And it's the most likely course of action. Meanwhile, though, it is going to be a dual mid. We will have Anis supporting Ammon in the mid. Okay, then. It will actually be Kurz playing the solo lane, the solo safe lane against the Lone Druid. A lone Druid opening up with a Ring of Protection. He'll see what he's going with. Okay, so two sets of tangos, a shield, a stout shield, and a Ring of Protection. He will be going for that early... Tranquil Boots, most likely. And now do we have any counter wards? We already have some counter wards here from Undying. Rubik going to save some in case he needs... See, these, these counter wards here on Aki, these are for annoying Broodmother. And he's put it here just because he's expecting Broodmother to throw a web down here. And that will help spot all over there. And that will help spot her over there as well. And there's that harassment and decay already starting to stack her. And now we've got the homing missile going to come in here. Going to cause some trouble. There we go. Broodmother now throwing down. Will we see... It? There we go. There we go. This is what I meant. Saving that there. Broodmother taking a lot of damage here. And there's the first two webs already being countered. Will we give chase? I think it was possible if you wanted to, but decides not to. Broom, they're going to heal up her legs there. But basically, Envy, I believe, is holding on that goal just in case they needed to remove a blocking ward here. And in this case, hasn't had to. Meanwhile, though, should be a fairly easy farm in mid. Especially with dual breath to knock off the refraction charge. There we go. Templar Assassin has already started using that camp. She can't really get a time to farm here. Can't even fade into Meld to try and stay out of trouble either. That counter would already been thrown down. Mill Loader has of course opened up with the stun, but I am expecting him to start level one level in flak max out flak, uh, one level in his rocket barrage, one level in oh max out flak, and of course stats as well. 
Okay, yeah, S4 yeah. trying to go in there, but copying the harass. We'll see some liquid fire in a second from Jakira, I do it, assume. Meanwhile, Enchantress, though, of course, a really strong ganker. And in fact, I think she's getting ready to pull. Start pulling into this camp. This is going to upset Bulldog a little bit. Illusion. Meanwhile, Broodmother finding herself in an illusion room. Not really going to do a whole lot with it, though. She's going to come in here. And looks like she's just going to try and uh, jack this pull if she can. I don't know how much she'll get out of it, though. Rubik, though, wow. Only one war to his name. That's it in terms of items. Definitely really feeling the bite as a support there. Do we have any counter wards? Yes, we do have a second for the or a second counter ward there in case they need it. Meanwhile, Bulldog gonna be copying some iron shell harassment there. Always frustrating. That's it though. He is farming over. Well. Okay, it's 11 and 2 at the moment. Does need to be careful that he doesn't get run down by that, but he is working towards. I assume he's working towards those tranquil boots as soon as he can. Yeah, well, there's a pull there from Aki. Let's see, fairly even so far. It's going to come down a load of this farm on the Gyarocopter. See, he's picking up a Midas straight away. Here it comes. And the Rubik did indeed spend some of his early gold on counter wards. He was indeed camping that early gold. Looks like S4 in some trouble here. Come on, attacks. Goes for Mel to dodge an attack. One more hit. There we go. Jakiro gets it off. Unfortunately, that step back there, sort of indecision of that tree, caused him to basically allow Jakiro to get back in range. As is Jakiro, one of the slower base speeds there. S4 should have been able to run it. Unfortunately, that slight step back there got him back within range. Any more KSI. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, he's not pulling. He's just going to use... This is a really annoying trick. It's actually something you can do with a hard cam, in fact, if you want to. As well as Sin Chen do it plenty of times. Unfortunately, in this case, we do have the Mud Golems there, which are a magic immune, so the Wild King can't do much about it. But there we go. There's the double pull. Nicely done by KSI. We'll see if it pays off there in the end. You might have failed. Yeah, it looks like you failed the stack there. It was just a little bit too slow on that. I mean, Broom on the finest of a haste. I don't do much with it though. Again, copying that decay. Always frustrating. See, she's got under 500 health. A little, always frustrating. Enchantress now. We get the roots proc down. It looks like Darkseid may be in some trouble. Trying to juke in the opposite direction though. We'll be able to escape. Just barely though. 70 health. And now we're actually coming back here. In fact, the bear might turn around although he has to be careful here. Nature's pro uh, rather. Enchantress is coming to help out. And we are Darkseid always already healing up at a rapid rate. Probably going for a mech there with that ring of health. Or that could that could also be building towards a pipe. That's another possibility. But that said, they're not that, there's not that much burst magical damage on the Radiant team, so I kind of doubt it in the end. But there we go, Tombstone Trust down there. And now Broodmother is going to have to back up. She's one of those heroes. She does catch up very quickly, even if she's harassed heavily. Like it's 2-0 at the moment for her at the 5-minute mark. But she's a hero that catches up very quickly, so it's not going to be a big deal for her. See the decay again being thrown at her. She might even try and sneak in a deny. You know, I don't think she's willing to risk it. As you see, the Radiant going to get last hit in there. Lotus tried, but it didn't quite get it, though. Has gone straight for that Midas. He wants to be rolling in cash. Do we see the same here for... I think Lifesteal is doing the same the same party trick here. He will be going straight for that Midas as well. 1800 gold in the bank. It's going to be that or an armlet, I feel. Now KSI going for a smoke gank here. Going to wrap around the mid. Yes, she is going for the mid. That said, though, S4 is busy in the jungle. Just chopping away here. Just trying to take... Get some farm where he can find it. Dyer's KSI's looking for him, but can't find attack. anything. It looks like he's going to abandon that. Maybe head for a wrapper. No, no, no. Not with the tower there. Still looking for a gank. In fact, they might just try and bully him back under the tower and then enchant to jump out from behind. However, she's just giving the game away there with her creep. Although that said, S4 might not have been paying attention. He went bottom for the six minute room. We'll see if he finds it in a moment. Is it there? If it's not, Enchantress is going to get it. In fact, Enchantress is going to snag it. It's a regeneration. Oh, she can leave it. She's pinging it. I think she's saying the support come and get it. Who doesn't actually need it all? She's just pinging it for later. And looks like S4 Radiant will have the option to grab it if he wants to. Has attack. got that bottle up. In fact, Jakiro did not go and get it. They're still leaving it there. S4, though, assuming that somebody went and got it. Meanwhile, though, Bulldog has picked up his tranquil boots. How much money in the bank? 1400 gold in the bank. So we'll see if he goes for Midas as well. Boots now for Loader. Envy now going to come out from behind. Still has his counter wards if he wants them. They don't really have the burst damage just yet, though, to deal with the Broodmother. That there's Wraith Band. Broodmother, there we go. Decay being tossed down. Doesn't hit though. Sands though, gonna dodge back. 
and just try and keep yourself out of trouble. Realizes they're coming there. I don't think he knows whether or not. He probably knows, actually, he probably does know that they have counter wards. He would have seen Envy in the lane a couple of times. Meanwhile, KSI. Gonna head top once again. Ammon now, he did indeed. He pulled out the hand of Midas first, went straight for that gold making machine, that money making machine there. Meanwhile, Bulldog, level 7 now. Let's check the gold chart overall. It is favouring the radiant side slightly. I think it just comes down to the faster rate. I think it just comes down to mostly just a couple of better last hitters there, and also the slightly faster hand of Midas as well as the tower. Loader though, it looks like he's going for. That's possibly going to be an Aquila in a moment. He has picked up an early parts for an early Wraith Band. Meanwhile, Dark's here chasing Bulldog back quite a distance. His bear still on cooldown. We'll see him probably resummon one in a second. Yeah, I don't see it at Fountain. It must be off somewhere. There at Shopping. No, it was resummoned. He did actually get it picked off. Meanwhile, here we go. KSI. They're looking for a gank on Bulldog here. Now, they've got uh, one of the crappier creatures. They say to Hell Call. Kind of garbage when it comes to ganking. It's fat, it's slow, the nuke is pitiful, and generally it's just an all-round annoyance. And all, more often than not, it ends up blocking someone who gets in the way. Blocking a friendly even. But there we go, S4 now in some trouble. It's going to try and bait him, gets rooted down. Oh, the missed time, the poor timing. The Vacuum's in back though, and the bear being blocked now by Bulldog. He may actually get away here. Resummons it in front. Can he get and run him down here? The gank is not coming, and there we go. Darkseer surges up again, and Bulldog. Oh, he's probably somewhat. I would be spitting chips at that. He should have had that. Radiance Middle Tower, Dyer's bottom tower. Meanwhile, though, Radiance Middle Tower is all right, but they do lose a tier two tower here as well. Now, for Bruma, this is not a big deal. In fact, laying and push back to her side actually gives her some room to farm for a change. She, she's probably actually happy about that. But on the other hand, it means early farm for other for the enemy team. So they're probably not. It's you know, it's a downside, but at the same time, Port gets cancelled there. I think Mid was come and changed his mind, but it's it's more of the deal that she actually has room to farm now. You see, she's being left alone for at least a little bit. Well, that said, Yarok up there we go. Ring of Aquila is finished up on him now. Meanwhile, last we're coming back to mid. There's the open wounds. Pink is porting in. It's Jakira. Ice Path incoming. Tries to dodge. Succeeds. Nicely by the double damage rune gets popped. It turns every bait. There's a port coming in. There's the decay as well. Infest, so used to try and get him clear. It's on a race. As you see the slow getting thrown in. Here becomes a homing missile as well. Should manage to track down NS. NS, yes, in a lot of trouble. We'll get finished off there. Missile not even needed. And there we go. Infest popping out. Does a lot of damage to air to S4. S4 bottle charge is ready to go if they need it. See Loda also backing up. They're looking for a gank here on Enchantress. Enchantress is going to come in now. There's the refraction there on S4. S4, can he give chase? He's got the... Oh, there's the side of trap. That's a big hit there on KSI. One more hit if he can find the range. Gets the kill there. S4 now can meld out of trouble if he needs to in a second. There we go. Melds. They've got the Ursa collapsed in a fight. Well, no, they've got one left. In fact, he should just be able to escape this. He's a lot faster than the Ursus. There we go. He will manage to get away. In fact, looking for the 10 minute room, will manage to bottle it up in time before they can deny it. And S4 playing that one as well as he could. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Broodmother. There we go. See what I mean. She's going to use her spiders to farm the jungle rather than trying to push towers because the gyrocopter will just eat them alive with that flak cannon. Makes me think of the flat counter from Unreal Tournament. And that thing minced people. And that thing's pretty, pretty much what happened to the squishy supports in this. It just completely shreds them, especially once you get that Daedalus. Or Monkey King Baron, both those really, really hit hard. Meanwhile, Broodmother, Ice Path, gonna collect their Envy. Envy, though, Telekinesis, Dual Breath, gonna hit Envy. Actually drags him further on the town. They wanna go for this kill here. Here comes the Undying Flat Cannon, a Rocket Barrage as well. All guns are firing. Now it's Jakiro in some trouble. Here comes Army Missile. We'll land on him. And there we go. Aki now giving chase. Has a soul rip up if he wants to pop it on NS. NS is going to get drilled down. Tombstone also thrown down for good measure. Pretty much once the support starts getting zombies on him, it's over for the support. Once you get bitten, it's over. They just cannot get away. S4 though, going to pop his invis. Visible though. Realizes he is a creeper now wailing away on him. That ward there giving vision. Or rather detecting him rather than giving vision. Lone Druid. 1k gold in the bank. Also went for a Midas. Looks like no time they're going to play this fairly defensive as well. They don't really want to start pushing out too early. Just going to wait if for Temple Assassin to get a Blink Dagger, her BKB. Wait for Gyrocup to get farmed up. And you know what? I think they can handle it. It's going to come down to how Broodmother handles herself in the late game. Whether or not she can really cause a lot of havoc. Chantra's working the high ground there. Pinging here. What's going on?
No curse though. He's looking for a bit of room to farm here. Curse in on 56 and 2, doing fairly well. 61 and 1 there for the Lone Druid as well as the Dark. That said though, head and shoulders above them. Ammon here with his life still. Gonna snag that haste rune as well. Might actually gun for a kill here. In fact, if he finds Envy, Envy's probably in a lot of trouble. In fact, we'll just decide to go for the Ancients. And to actually take a fair bit of damage here, we'll need to be careful because they could actually pick off the Radiant. No, he's down. This is the issue. He's got nothing to invest here to get away with. He's got that haste, so he's going to run run for his life. But that said, the wraparound is coming there from Envy. Envy should be able to intercept. You need a blink in there. There's the Telekin. He's gonna drop him back. Not even needed, really. Templar Assassin just getting a blink there and it's jumping him. Nicely done there from the Radiant side, so picking off a much needed kill there on the Life Stealer. Now, in fact, he could even gun here for. Uh, there we go, he's got a gun for Ennis. Now it's drama refractions up. Will he blink in? He's thinking about it. In fact, just going to come in auto attack and a blink over the. Oh, blinks away. I think he was going to wait for. He was going to bait the Ice Path, blink behind, and start attacking from behind like that. But S4 decided to play it safe there in the end. Meanwhile, Broodmother starting to pick up a little bit of farm. 200 gold per minute. It's getting better. She's got that soaring, obviously. Once she gets the soaring, it starts to get things get a lot better for her. But of course, stand out right now. Load up. It's jail gold per minute at the moment, as you see. Spilings. This is what I mean. Those spilings get shredded by that flak. There we go. Getting the wild kid more chief. His tornado being abused there to farm the jungle. It's because it doesn't aggro those creep. Spidling, spidling's everywhere. There we go. The counter order be done by the die site in the bottom lane there. Bottom rune spot. Middle tower is under attack. Let's see, Curse having to be defensive. Doesn't want to get rooted out of position right now. The bear's standing guard there. S4. Blink dagger's up. Looks like he's going to. I assume the BKB is coming next. See the big stack of creep there. Life still unfortunately got baited in that. Tried to go for the steal. Really, to be honest, ill advised. I'm not sure why he went for that one. He had to assume that there would be one. It's one of the things you have to do. If you're stacking ancients, you've got to watch and make sure nobody's jacking them. Because if somebody steals your ancients, that's just pretty much. That is a huge setback if somebody steals your ancients. So trying to basically do that alone was a big mistake. Not only was he not going to kill that many, he was going to take a lot of damage. He got picked off fairly. He's a, wow! The Ammon just AFK it just lets him run up to him and smack him in the face with that melt. There we go, Refraction B, pop Ammon though, turning around. Enchantress coming as well. Ammon will need to be careful. Impetus though, doing a lot of damage. Not your destiny. More Bulldog, 2.5k in the bank. Ammon though, still going toe to toe there with the Life Stealer. No counter wards in mid, so if necessary, can just meld and blink out if problems really do occur. Meanwhile though, load up. Has picked up an old melt. Ooh, okay, is he going for a Manta style first? We will see in a moment. See, meanwhile, though, due to a jungle gank, Enchantress gets rooted down there. Ice, oh no, Iron Shell up, and then a surge forward, though. Darkseid changed his mind there. Envy also moving in to help out. Darkseid possibly seen an S4, though, picks off Enchantress, gets a bit of a wraparound gank there, intercepts him. Meanwhile, Chikura trying to back off. They get a slowdown on Curse. Curse, they're ducking into the jungle. Guard, go, go. He's just going to try and tell back. It's cancelled by those roots! And that has got to really, really suck. As it looks like the bear actually will get picked off by the tower. Bulldog, no, manages to recall him just in time. However, gets picked off by Enchantress's creep. And Bulldog now running for his life. Meanwhile, Templar Assassin taking another name. As it looks like now, Ammon trying to take down Envy. Envy taking a lot of damage. 13 seconds there on his tail. He's probably going to die here before he can do anything. Will go down now under the tower here. Ammon going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with S4. S4 changing his mind here. You're losing all of his refraction charges to the tower and creep there. And will actually have to back off. In fact, oh, no, he's baiting a little bit, changing his mind. He's going to come back in, although Ammon's still healing up there off the creep. Looks like S4 is just going to satisfy himself here while killing the creep wave. S4, though, kicking ass and taking a Meanwhile, load up, free farming away. Cancer, on the other hand, has picked up Power Treads along with his Urn of Shadows. It's fairly stock standard build for the Enchanters. We'll see. It's not the machine gun, but it's actually something we used to see the enchantress do a little bit was the Mask of Madness and Phase Boost just to hit really, really hard at a stupid long attack speed with Arganim, a stupid, stupid long attack range with Arganim Scepter. But we'll have a quick pause here as apparently some issues have cropped up. <coughs> apparently Cyber Arena again causing issues as we will have occurs here crash out once again. Templar Assassin, though, 2.2k in the bank. We'll see if she goes for the BKB first or if she opts for a different choice. I mean, we've even seen early Mantis on Templar Assassins as well. 
We'll see what she opts for shortly. As we see a smoke gank, though, looks like the Dire team looking for a bit of a smoke gank here on the Gyrocon, which they definitely, truly do need. 530 gold minute, they really need a hell of a gank on him, and soon. We have a 5k plus gold advantage here for no Titan, along with a 7.5k plus experience lead. That's definitely going to hurt. The 16 minute mark, it's more the experience lead that really stings, just because they have those level advantages. Well, over room, are they going to be harassed here by an incoming missile? Templar Assassin just going to sneak in some farm where she can. I think S4 says he really wants that rune. Aki, though, going to put some pressure on mid. Maybe if they... Looks like they should have it. They have an opportunity to possibly do a lot of damage to this mid-tower. Maybe kill it. They don't really have any defense to be mustered. Ammon won't really be able to come and do this by himself. Especially Bulldog as well as S4 show up to that mid lane. Meanwhile, though, the gank will go down on the bottom lane against the Radiant. We'll see if they can handle that. Whether or not somebody can pull it back in time. Loader is quite squishy, though. Only... 800 health at the moment. They should be able to pick him off. They get those nukes stacked on him quickly. He's going to fall down very, very quickly. Where does the name No Tide Hunter come from? This is uh, going back to when the team had... Oh, I forget who was in it, but basically it was an older roster in the team, but something they really, really had... I'm going to move away from that missile because it's bloody annoying. Something they really had, sure they hated was tight on it, basically, because they'd, they'd be really frustrated. They have to push against, dive against him early. And, like, after he gets his old Miss Ravage, they'd be really, really worried about diving as a team, that sort of business, pushing early on. It just, it was a big scare factor. So that's why they said no tight on used to ban him a lot. But this is going back to when we had a different ban system, and tight was obviously a lot more popular back in that metagame, whereas he's not as, he's very rarely picked these days, actually. He's sort of not really one of the, I still think he's a perfectly viable hero, still a very strong hero, just, again, it's like Ventral Spirit. She's just not that popular. But she still, when the right when the right moment comes, she's a great hero. Like we saw last match, Ventral Spirit, the aura stacking, it really caused a lot of trouble for no title. It was really good. CM stands for Captain's Mode. Or, if you're in-game, probably Crystal Maiden as well. Try and get an update on what's going on. I mean, for all I know, the arena may stuff their PCs full of cats and then be surprised when the damn thing catches on fire. Contrary to popular belief, cats do not mix well with PCs. In fact, I had a dog and it shedded like crazy. Oh, he's apparently just launching the Dota Client, but my god, the hair that would get stuck inside the fan filters. I'm actually something I'm really glad of, actually, now that I've... I've got my PC down, the tower is on the ground. The fact that I have filters on this new case, it really does help with a lot of the issues I used to have. We should have... should have Curse back in here in a moment. Bulldog, he's sitting on 3,000 gold, looking for around about... if he keeps up at this pace, probably a 20 minute radiance, and if he can get a 20 minute radiance, that is definitely going to sting. Not only is he going to help out with Broodmother's crap, and just keep those spinelings off towns, that sort of business. But overall, it's just really annoying to push against, especially for a hero like Chik especially for Chikuro, Enchantress. Even Broodmother doesn't have that much health either. It's still fairly painful for her, although she is going for a BKB first. She's not doing the Orchid Rush. Lifesteal, though, going for his armlet. No surprises there. Pretty stock standard stuff. But it's going to make these heroes like uh, Darkseer, Enchantress, Chikuro, they're going to have to worry about that burn in the fight. Okay, he's reconnecting in now. Fantastic. Templar Assassin, I, I assume it's going to be, I think it'll be a BKB next, just to help deal with some of the more, more annoying things. Obviously the attack speed slow when you're hitting Enchantress can be somewhat annoying, but it's more just a slow, the slow from Lifesteal. And we've seen when she gets stuck down, when she gets locked down inside a Macro Pyre, we've seen this so many times, Jakira versus Templar Assassin, not pretty, if you get some Macro Pyre on her, it completely and utterly melts her, so having a BKB is very handy indeed, and I get the feeling it'll be an early BKB. I have, of course, seen Fast Manners, but I think BKB in this matchup, not a bad choice, especially if it'll help with like, the Iron Shell, all that sort of business as well. We should be rolling in a second.
here we go. Okay, so back to where we were. Smoke gank incoming on Lora. Definitely something that they do want to have happen ASAP. Now we see Santa just doing a little bit of bait here. Just going to try and get Lora comfortable. Although Lora actually backing off entirely. Is more a luck. I think it's either like Spidey Sense or Luck Factor. Because they didn't, they didn't see him. He didn't see them coming. Didn't see them smoke by. And yeah, there we go. He's just gone. In, they've just gone to the jungle to get a little bit of farm happening. In fact, he's stuck down back down the tower. And there he is. he's going to move in now. And now he's definitely vulnerable. The iron shell. Now we can see a surge in a second. Well, there's a slow and chance to There's a back and dual breath as well. Our loader now going to drop his ult. And now we're going to see. Oh no! One more hit there. We'll bring down. He brings down the Broodmother as a bit of a revenge kill there from S4. But it looks like now we've got Kurz in a bit of trouble. Haste rune there on Temple of Assassin. A port in from her. However, they only get a one-for-one one trade. Dyer's middle tower is under and that'll set Lone Draw back. Only, I mean, rather, Gyrocopter back a little bit. He actually Radiant went for the lifesteal. Okay, went for the lifesteal first. Interesting. Went for that lifesteal first. See the slowed proc down there. Oh, and NS. NS taking a lot of damage here. Throws the ice fast. Dodged by S4. Nicely done. One more auto attack. Finishes him off. Temple Assassin getting the kill. Oh, we've got the rope moment missile now. On Darks here. Rocket Barrage here. Doing a lot of damage to M. And M. M. trying to back up. Can we get the better proc roots? Bear gets their kill. That Bulldog picks up a kill. Roaming missile lands on Kurt. Kurt's trying to surge out of trouble. Not going to happen. Gyrocopter gets another kill. And Virtus Pro are apparently on tilt right now. They are getting slammed left, right, and center. Definitely not their best of games right now. And O Tide Hunter, they're hitting back hard. They know they've got to win this match. We see that black cannon shredding people. And now here we go. A quick Roshan run as well. They've got the Undying here to help them out, along with the Gyrocopter. Should be able to help clean things up fairly quickly here. Mel hits, of course, negative armor. The best way to shred Roshan is negative armor in this early phase. So we can see a free Roshan at this point in time. They can't really contest this with two heroes down. They actually send the Spirings to try and get an Aegis kill. They're not going to happen though. It doesn't get denied out. And there we go. Spirit Bear with his Relic as well. And only 500 gold shy of the Radiance. He'll have this before. He could have this even before the 20 mark. We'll see in a moment though. If they can get this tower, that will definitely be a very quick Radiance indeed. Not how on Scylla level quick, but still pretty damn quick. I think quickest I've seen those two farmers around a 13, 40 minute mark. Very, very early Radiances indeed. There we go. Okay, Tombstone getting dropped down here. Just going to harass him for a bit now. Loader going to... There we go. Flat cannon to the rescue. Look at this farm. Loader going to jump up. He was on 2.2k. Only 2k, in fact. Going to pick up a lot of extra cash there. The zombies might have jacked a little bit of it. But regardless, looks like he should be able to clean this up fairly easily. And there we go. He's going to be sitting on about 300 gold here. 3,000 gold here in a moment. That is definitely a huge, huge boost. And this is why, you, when you when you stack like this, you've got to make sure you keep vision of your stacked ancients. You do not want somebody stealing it like that. Meanwhile, though, big spiling, big nest of spilings there. Looks like they're not going to push the tower just yet. And do we have that radiance? It's coming out. It's very, there we go. It's on the way. It should be away, on the way in a second there. Andrew it has the cash. Meanwhile, a bit of a defense being mounted up here. Armlet has finished up. S4 is just skulking for a gank. He has 50. Yeah, okay. Early Yasha. So we'll see if he goes for the full mana, or if he's just grabbing the Yasha for the... I mean, Yasha for an agility hero is really, really cost-effective in terms of stat and damage output. There S4, just going to harass Ammon a little bit. Really commits the quest, and there is three heroes converging on the ice path will miss, and I think they might have to abort on that. And in fact, just you have a wild kid. I mean, that's one way you can shut down a Templar Assassin mid, even if you don't have a good mid versa. Just get a jungle like a Chantry Chen to dominate a wild kid tornado chief, and then send in the tornado. And that really, it messes with any solo mid. If you've got a weak mid, it's one of the ways you can help them out very easily. Just send in a Wildkin Tornado. It really screws them over in the early phase. You see the missile? You can send out after Jakira. Jakira, though, will get rid of it before it lands them. That said, the push is on here. They are trying to take down this tower. There we go. Trap getting thrown down. They can see it. Nope. Disappears before they can get their hits on it. Loader, though, giving chase. Has gone straight for the mana style. Now, there's another homie missile being popped down on the on Virtus Pro there. However, it's on the Nakes. He should be able to dodge that. If he wants to rage up and dodge it, he can. 2k on Templar Assassin. We'll see if she goes for the full mana or if she goes for a BKB next. And they actually get the kill there on a homie missile instead. S4 potentially could blink over and gun here. Here the open wounds at Haze Runa. Envy. Envy doesn't give a damn about that. Open wounds there. Ammon now possibly out of position. Rage about to wear off. Here comes Delkinesis in a second. Nope. Decides to go after Chikiro. He picks off Chikiro. And it will not be able to pick off uh, Enchantress. Enchantress is actually going to back off in time. But they're not really concerned about that. They just want to get one hero, get the gank, and then get the push. Meanwhile, bottom line, spidling push incoming. Dirge is going to try and hold that up. I don't know if he can, to be honest. We'll see in a second there. There's the decay. He might. 
She uh, looks like he should be able to handle this, just decaying his way to victory here. Broodmother is going to have to back up a little bit. Meanwhile, tier 2 top tower for the Dire team has been destroyed. They are trying to get the counter push. Here comes a gank, though. Darkseid coming from behind. Has picked up a mech, although so does Undyne. Undyne also has his back. Throws down the tombstones. Has come at me. Soul Rip there as well. Healing himself up rapidly. Port's coming. Darkseid about to regret making this decision here. As he's getting a body blocked in. Going to make the surge less effective. And here comes the Solomon Taker. Oh, not just another decay and a meld hit. Shreds of 3k in the bank now for Templar Assassin. The, oh, wow. The Radius is done as well. Lone Druid has that finished up. And what has he got coming up next? 2.4k in the bank. He just bought the Radiance like a minute ago. Already 2.4 thousand gold in the bank. He is making some serious cash here. Loader went for the full on Manta Stars, we said. Looks like he might even try and ditch the Ring of Aquila in a second. He really doesn't need that much anymore. He can ditch that for a full on damage item in a second. See if he goes for Monkey Kimara or Daedalus. One of the two. Meanwhile, now trying to push the bottom lane there as well. There we go. Easy tier 2 in the mid lane there. No time. I'm going to tear that apart really quickly. So we're just going to bring out 15k gold advantage for rating as well as a 15k experience lead as well. Let's bring the net value. Net worth there. 13k. Oh, 13k. Nearly 14k there for Gyrocopter. The closest behind is 9,000 if the Nakes getting head and shoulders above the Nakes at the moment. Nakes really only has that armor to his name. Now the push is on. The wall tossed down by Darts. A little bit far back though. We'll try and vacuum people into it. I know. Uh, missile being tossed out there. Will it hit first, bro? Looks like he's going to try and back up. They should be able to finish it. Nope, they don't get it in time. Dodge is back into it instead. There we go. Tower down. Now they're going to get this melee rack. Just a second. Call down. Comes down the old air from the Arakop. They will pick off Shikiro as well. And the Enchantress dies as well. They will have to buy back though for Enchantress. The Magpie not doing nearly any damage at all. And now a double down from there for S4. They will drill down this rack. It's nice and easy. No time. And I'm making it look all too easy there. Deny. No, not going to happen. Enchantress goes for it. Doesn't get it. Meanwhile, though, Broodmother, out of position, gets spotted up by Counter Wars. Double kill there for S4. And now a sweep to the top racks as well. Here we go. Mini push coming in. Spirit Bear building his Assault Curious as well. As the armor as well tanking. A quick switch over there. Armor being traded from the bear, from the Druid to the Bear there just to help the Bear tank a little bit better. We've got the Flat Cannon. No Flat Cannon is on cooldown once again. They are just under backup though. Chalbo going to go down to an illusion possibly. Maybe not. Cooldown once again coming in. There goes the Darks. He's getting drilled down once again. Blue Mother getting shredded although she's healing up from Ultimate. Loader needs to back up there. No he does. He survives. He does not survive in the end. He has the Aegis so Here we go. We looks like he's baited them out of position. The tower goes down. He gets denied there by Enchantress. However, they're going to lose the life still. There's the GG. And that is a one-all tie-up now. We will need to go to Game 3 to decide this match. And that will decide who gets knocked out of the running for fourth spot in the playoffs. Virtus Pro versus No Tide. And a one-all now. No Tide Hunter crushing this match. And like I said, the Gyrocopter, he's a curveball. Nobody really suspects him at the moment. People are really still starting to get used to him. Definitely complete lane. I mean, in this game now, complete lane dominance from no time the entire time. Didn't really get any disruptions there on Garakop's farm apart from one single lone gank. Otherwise, just complete free farm there for Garakop. I mean, I to say it was more the bear and S4. Giving S4 Templar Assassins a quick way to cause yourself grief. He really does cause a lot of damage with that hero. However, guys, that was game number two. Now it is one all tie. We are going to game number three after a short break. So stay tuned, guys. We have got the third and final decider coming up in just a